William Ernest Henley was an English poet, critic and editor, best remembered for his 1875 poem Invictus. Life and career, Henley was born in Gloucester and was the oldest of a family of six children, five sons and a daughter. His father, William, a bookseller and stationer, died in 1868 and was survived by young children and creditors. His mother, Mary Morgan, was descended from the poet and critic Joseph Wharton. Between 1861 and 1867, Henley was a pupil at the The Crypt School, Gloucester. A commission had recently attempted to revive the school by securing as headmaster the brilliant and academically distinguished Thomas Edward Brown. Though Brown's tenure was relatively brief, he was a revelation to Henley because the poet was a man of genius and a Euro the first I'd ever seen. Brown and Henley began a lifelong friendship, and Henley wrote an admiring obituary to Brown in the New Review. He was singularly kind to me at a moment when I needed kindness even more than I needed encouragement. From the age of 12, Henley suffered from tuberculosis of the bone that resulted in the amputation of his left leg below the knee in 1868 Euro 69. According to Robert Louis Stevenson's letters, the idea for the character of Long John Silver was inspired by Stevenson's real-life friend Henley. Stevenson's stepson, Lloyd Osborne, described Henley as a great, glowing, massive-shouldered fellow with a big red beard and a crutch. Jovial, astoundingly clever, and with a laugh that rolled like music. He had an unimaginable fire and vitality. He swept one off one's feet. In a letter to Henley after the publication of Treasure Island, Stevenson wrote, I will now make a confession, it was the sight of your maimed strength and masterfulness that begot Long John Silverer. The idea of the maimed man, ruling and dreaded by the sound, was entirely taken from you. Frequent illness often kept him from school, although the misfortunes of his father's business may also have contributed. In 1867, Henley passed the Oxford Local School's examination and soon moved to London where he attempted to establish himself as a journalist. However, his work over the next eight years was interrupted by long stays in the hospital because his right foot had also become diseased. Henley contested the diagnosis that a second amputation was the only means to save his life by seeking a consultation with the pioneering surgeon Joseph Lister at the Royal Infirmary of Edinburgh. After three years in the hospital, during which Henley wrote and published the poems collected as in hospital, he was discharged. Although Lister's treatment had not effected a complete cure, Henley enjoyed a relatively active life for nearly thirty more years. On January 22, 1878, he married Hannah Johnson Boyle, the youngest daughter of Edward Boyle, a mechanical engineer from Edinburgh, and his wife, Mary Ann Nar Copyright E. Mackey. Henley's sickly young daughter, Margaret Henley, was immortalized by J. M. Barry in his children's classic, Peter Pan, unable to speak clearly. Young Margaret had called her friend Barry her F. W. E. N. D. Y. Wendy, resulting in the use of Wendy in the book. Margaret did not survive long enough to read the book. She died on February 11, 1894 at the age of five and was buried at the country estate of her father's friend, Harry Cockaine Cust, in Cockaine Hatley, Bedfordshire. After his recovery, Henley earned his living as a publisher. In 1889 he became editor of the Scots Observer, an Edinburgh journal of the arts and current events. After its headquarters were transferred to London in 1891. It became the National Observer and remained under Henley's editorship until 1893. The paper had almost as many writers as readers, said Henley, and its fame was confined mainly to the literary class, but it was a lively and influential contributor to the literary life of its era. Henley had an editor's gift for identifying new talent, and the men of the Scots Observer, said Henley affectionately, usually justified his support. Charles Wibley was Henley's friend and helped him edit The Observer. The journal's outlook was conservative and often sympathetic to the growing imperialism of its time. Among other services to literature it published Rudyard Kipling's Barrack Room Ballads. Henley died of tuberculosis in 1903 at the age of 53 at his home in Woking, and his ashes were interred in his daughter's grave in the churchyard at Cockaine Hatley in Bedfordshire. Works Arguably his best-remembered work is the poem Invictus, written in 1875. 
It is said that this was written as a demonstration of his resilience following the amputation of his foot due to tubercular infection. This passionate and defiant poem should be compared with his beautiful and contemplative acceptance of death and dying in the poem Margaritae Sorori. The poems of In Hospital are also noteworthy as some of the earliest free verse written in England. With J. S. Farmer, Henley edited a seven-volume dictionary of slang and its analogues which inspired his two translations into Thieves' Slang of Ballads by Frenna Section Wavillon. In 1890, Henley published Views and Reviews, a volume of notable criticisms, which he described as lesser book than a mosaic of scraps and shreds recovered from the shot rubbish of some fourteen years of journalism. The criticisms, covering a wide range of authors were remarkable for their insight. In 1892, he published a second volume of poetry, named after the first poem, The Song of the Sword, but retitled London Voluntaries after another section in the second edition. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote that he had not received the same thrill of poetry so intimate and so deep since George Meredith's Joy of Earth, and Love in the Valley. I did not guess you were so great a magician. These are new tunes. This is an undertone of the true Apollo. These are not verse. They are poetry. During 1892, Henley also published three plays written with Stevenson, Bo Austin, Deacon Brodie, and Admiral Guinea. In 1895, Henley's poem, Mchari, was published in a volume with the other plays. Deacon Brodie was produced in Edinburgh in 1884 and later in London. Herbert Bear Bochmtree produced Bo Austin at the Haymarket on November 3, 1890. Henley's poem, Pro Reg Nostro, became popular during the First World War as a piece of patriotic verse. It contains the following refrain, What have I done for you, England, my England? What is there I would not do, England my own? The poem and its sentiments have since been parodied by those unhappy with the jingoism they feel it expresses or the propagandistic use it is put to. England, My England, a short story by D. H. Lawrence and also England, Their England the novel by A. G. MacDonald both used the phrase. It is also referred to in Alan Bennett's satirical play Habeas Corpus. While incarcerated on Robben Island Nelson Mandela recited the poem Invictus to other prisoners and felt empowered by its message of self-mastery. In the film Invictus, produced and directed by Clint Eastwood, the poem is cited several times. It becomes the central inspirational gift from Mandela, played by Morgan Freeman, to Springbok rugby team captain for an Section wa Piena, played by Matt Damon in advance of the post-apartheid Rugby World Cup hosted in 1995 by South Africa and won by the underdog Springboks. Notes References uh, This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, a Chisholm, Hugh, Ed Henley, William Ernest. Encyclopaedia Britannica. Cambridge University Presser, External Links, Works by William Henley at Project Gutenberg, Poetry Archive, 137 Poems of William Ernest Henley, The Difference, a poem by Florence Earl Coates.